We've got more for you because my next guest is from Britain's biggest girl band of all time. Oh, we've got a lot of little mix fans in tonight, haven't we? <laughs> Not them. From Girls Aloud. <laughs> the fabulous Kimberly Walsh. Wow. <laughs> you look fabulous. Kimberly, oh, we're going to chat when you get out, but you were on Strictly, of course, recently. You did yes, Fabulous was. on Strictly. Uh, how was that? Was it an enjoyable process? You it enjoyed was. That? No, I loved it. It was hard work, but I, I did. I really hard enjoyed work. it. Hard work? Hard work? I promise you, it was hard work. It's not hard work. I'll you show should... you some moves when I come out. It's hard. <laughs> I know you say... Hang on. Dance moves. Oh, Dance yeah. moves, I should have said. Kimberly Walsh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she's here, I'm thrilled. And finally, we're also going to be chatting to them, but they'll be playing music. You met them earlier. We've got Suggs and Chaz who will be coming out alongside with Madness playing later. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Great Madness. <laughs> All right, that's the show we've got lined up for this week now. Uh, before we get to that, I know it's tough this time of year, January. Everyone's trying to give up stuff. Everyone's giving up, you know, after the news is resolution, that kind of thing, giving up booze. And by the way, Suggs, how is dry January going? Fantastic, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, yes. I bet. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but the reason why I'm raising this, though, isn't to talk about alcohol, but it's because the, the other things that are very hard to give up, of course, are treats like chocolate and cakes. And then, you know, you're trying to lose weight, it's very difficult. I found some cakes that I think will help you. They've been made by an extraordinary food artist. Her name is Miss Cakehead. That's what she calls herself. OK, so, uh, and I've got some out here as well. So I'll show you on the screen first. These are, first of all, these are designed to look like open wounds. OK? <laughs> but you know what? That really wouldn't put me off because that looks sort of jammy and cherry flat and I think yeah okay I'll eat an open wound cake certainly okay so uh, you move on to this one and this is the snail cake but once again <laughs> that doesn't look too bad because you imagine if that's marzipan or something you'd wolf that down wouldn't you now we're getting into the serious stuff this is meant to represent leeches on a cut cake <laughs> but it's, this is an actual edible cake you could eat, OK? I'm going to give it a little... Oh, that smells nice. That smells sort of licorice -y. It's more lychee. <laughs> and the cake is... Oh, it's more like a biscuit. Actually, that's really good. <laughs> it's got white chocolate. Anyway, they're meant to be putting you off. So, the other cakes... I don't know if she does weddings, but... I have another couple of our guests have had birthdays this week. So, uh, who, who's had birthdays this week in the green room? Suggs and Chaz. Suggs and Chaz. Chaz. <clears throat> okay. So, in honour of your birthday, we said to Miss Cakehead, make us one of your special cakes. She's made it. It's under there. Let's have a look at the cake she's made for you. <laughs> that is a cake. <laughs> They're cake cigarette butts. <laughs> Fire one. What are they like? They're like You're, a Dundee cake with a bit get, of candy on top. I think, I think she makes a cake version of the patch as well. <laughs> Let's have a look <laughs> at the other cake. we know what happened to Mrs. Kipling, hey? <laughs> Let's get my first guest out, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! Uh, she is, and I know it's a terrible thing to say about someone, but she is, she's already a national treasure. The fabulous, the funny, Joe Brand, ladies and gentlemen! Yeah. Come and sit down, get comfortable. So, did you have one of the... Can I just ask, who's ironically whistling at me there? <laughs> Whoever that was over there, can I just say, I deliberately keep my weight up so a totter like you won't fancy me. <laughs> and... <laughs> Whoever that was over there, possibly my husband, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. Maybe one of them was for me. I love you. Hey, um, what were the cigarette things like? Were they, were they tasty? They were mainly icing. Oh, they, so they were quite tasty then? They were right. They looked disgusting, of course. I'd rather have had a real fag. I bet you would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Splash. 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 ITV Saturday Night's surprise hit of the year. Yeah. The thing that surprised me about seeing you in, in Splash was I thought, okay, I didn't think of you as a diving person. Uh, Tom Daly's hosting, of course, he has diving credentials. Mm -hmm. The other two guys on the show, the people on either side of you, they <laughs> yeah. are diving professionals, I believe. Yeah. And in the middle we have someone who isn't known for her diving, and yet you do dive and you are very much into that kind of thing. Is that correct? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite hard for me being a sort of national fitness icon. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm forced now everywhere I go to sort of dish out fitness advice. So just very quickly, um, if your lovers put on too much weight, get them to walk three miles in the morning and three miles at night, and by the end of the week, the fat git will be 42 miles away. <laughs> so uh, I trust that's helpful. Um, very useful, I would make it. I did. I did a lot of diving when I was a kid, and also a couple of years ago, I did a, a show called Big Splash, and I trained um, at Crystal Palace uh, with actually Tom Daly's erstwhile cheeky partner. Um, Blake Aldridge, who's no longer with him. Just a look, this is some clips, so there's a little montage here of you of some of my favourite moments of Splash so far. They're scared. I'll tell you why, because it hurts. It hurts even more if you don't get it right. Well, I wonder where that bikini had gone. I've been looking for it for ages, <laughs> but... Um... Over rotate, but I do that when I come out the pub, so who cares? <laughs> you can do it. It was like the most majestic turkey I've ever seen being fired <laughs> out of a cannon. Slightly disappointed you didn't have your skis on. <laughs> Eddie the Eagle? Who knew? Who knew Eddie the Eagle could do that? But you, but you, and you enjoy it as a sport, it's something you do. If you went there, would you go on the board through choice? Would you say, I, I enjoy it that much, I'd like to do it? No, I'd have to be beaten with a hammer <laughs> to go. Uh, no, I've, I've had a couple of quite bad diving experiences, which put me off. OK, well, let's hear one. Well, uh, when I was about 20, I worked as a nurse in a residential uh, place for adults with learning disability, and one day we took them swimming, and the other nurse that I was with says, look, they want to know how someone dives can can you show them? Because he knew that I was a diver. So I said, yeah, I can. And uh, I dived off the side, forgetting I was in the shallow end. And I know, and I, I hit the bottom of the pool. My teeth went right through my face. And I came up out of the water with a massive hole in my face. It was a bit like Jaws. There was kind of blood yeah. all around me. <laughs> And what was so beautiful about these people that I was showing my diving to was they thought that's how you were meant to do it. <laughs> and they gave me a fantastic round of applause. <laughs> but it, it got worse because I went to A&E and they said to me, it's too swollen to use an anaesthetic, so they stitched it up without one. Oh! So, good day. Uh, any of you dive? Eddie, you could, you're, fit, you're fit as a little whippet. You could dive. No, I, do you know what? I, I, I remember thinking, I, I always thought I had a certain amount of elegance but I, I, I once went and did a diving thing at school and I came up, sort of, you know, did the whole swallow thing, came up expecting nines and tens and I got a 2.4, I think. Hold oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it. You went to school. I thought you were joking about the scoring. They were actually they were scoring actually you scoring. at school. <laughs> wow. Suggs, have you ever been in the water? Well, funny, uh, Joe Brown's story. Yeah, I was once teaching my nephews about nine or ten in Whitstable. They have these sort of breakwaters. We've got these little steps going down into the sea and I thought it was on the last one. I'd say, this is the way you do it, boys. You dive across the water. I hadn't seen that there was another one under the water I dived straight into. Wow. Wow. And the same, cut my shoulder open and I was surrounded with blood. It must be something, uh, you know, fellow professional divers do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a kind of self-help group for people who've harmed themselves <laughs> in pools. <laughs> we should do this every Saturday. <laughs> Uh, so you like swimming, though? You're, you're a kind of strong swimmer? You enjoy swimming, that kind of thing? You're... I, yeah, I love swimming. I particularly like swimming in the sea. Nice. I love yes. that. You know, it's nice to see the odd tempon float past. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... Oh, the British seaside. I did, I, a few years ago, I did actually do a, a sponsored um, swim. I was last, and um, I was chatting away to someone in the water, and a bloke on the beach went, shut your mouth. I said to him, how dare you? And he went, no, you're coming up to the sewage pipe. <laughs> so, oh, that's the British sea for you oh. tonight. Oh. It's part of the fun of being in the sea, though. It is, really. Being able to go to the toilet right there without taking your clothes off. <laughs> I always make full use of that privilege. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, uh, Joe has done a lot over the years for Comic Relief, as I'm sure you know. Uh, Comic Relief here is with us again this year, and you're doing something quite special for this year, which I'm very much looking forward to. Can you tell us about that yet? Uh, yeah, I took part in uh, a Comic Relief Great British Bake Off. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. It was really good fun. And so, and this is uh, Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry and, and Mel and Sue. It's the the whole team from the the proper show. Indeed. Okay. And and comedians trying to make cakes. Who else was with you? Can we say who was? Uh, well, on my show, it was um, Stephen K. Amos, and uh, a double act. Uh, two girls. Oh bloody hell! I've forgotten their names. <laughs> it's the menopause people. I've got no memory to speak you of. You haven't got them. Have you got the menopause going on yet? No, that happened about 1853. <laughs> but I am still grumpy. <laughs> Actually, I do really, really enjoy. <laughs> no, I do. But you've always professionally been grumpy, haven't you? Well, I suppose I have, but actually, that, that's all a front in a way, mm. because comedy audiences, they're, they're not kind. And if they look at you and they think that you're starting to fail and you're getting a bit upset, they don't go, ah, oh, go we'll you. help you out. Yeah. They kill you. So. Uh, and so it's really important to look like you don't care. So that's what that was all about. But it's great now because I think now people have... And initially, I think, I think some people took that the wrong way. And some people thought you were, you know, like you were... People you say, oh, she's a, not aggressive, but they're like a man-hater. Even though you were doing just what you weren't at all. You couldn't... Anyone in their right mind couldn't have interpreted it in that way. But I think it was because you were a woman being quite strong back at them on stage. But now everyone, they know it's you. They love you for you. And it must feel... Does it feel strange that everyone's come around to you in that way? Well, yeah, it does feel a bit weird, you know, cos I'm kind of really used to getting abuse from blokes in vans, yeah. like, for years. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are you married to a bloke in a van? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I, th I remember once, like, walking um, along Oxford Street years ago and a white van, my fave, came uh, very <laughs> slowly past. And, of course, they did, oh, oh lesbian, all this sort of thing out, <laughs> out the window. And I did have, I, I did have quite PM, bad PMT that day. <laughs> and I went and ripped their windscreen wipers off. <laughs> You yeah, actually did that? I did. Wow, congratulations. I did. It was, it was so enjoyable. I mean, I would never normally do anything like that at all. <laughs> That's the joy of hormones, ladies. <laughs> and, um, but actually, the other day, I was just going to the paper shop and a dust cart went by and a bin man that was driving it went, Oi, Joe! And I thought, here we go, you know, fat, ugly, whatever. And I um, went, yes. And... Uh, <laughs> He said, um, I just want to tell you, you're the funniest woman in the world, and I genuinely mean that. Oh. And I was so touched. Oh, I know, it's lovely. That's so lovely. And then he shouted, lesbian, and drove off really quickly. No, well, I mean, I know I didn't have to sleep with him afterwards, but, you know, <laughs> I, was, seemed, I was grateful. It seemed polite. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what? A, I agree with him. B, thank you for being here. Good luck with the rest of the space, and I can't wait to see you in the Bake Off and Comic Relief this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Brand. <laughs> Don't go away. After the break, I'll be joined by one of our finest young actors, Mr Eddie Redmayne. See you in a couple of minutes.